Fire, I'm Pop, and I'm here with another edition of Armed Citizen Stories. And today's story is coming right out of my favorite publication, First Freedom Magazine, published by the NRA. And Armed Citizen Stories can be found right there. And uh, once again, my push for the NRA, if you're not a member, now is the time to join. No better time than now. Anyway, let's get right to the stories. They're quite interesting. I have not read these yet. Uh, but they're always good. So let's continue on. Christy Vascalecos got into a heated argument with her boyfriend early one morning prior to kicking him out just before 6 a.m. He, he returned soon thereafter, however, and demanded to be let in. He broke several windows and, bangled up and banged on the front door. The fight moved outside onto the side where a couple continued to argue. The noise woke neighbors, including Vicky Rock, who was staying at her boyfriend's apartment upstairs. Rock, 50, went outside and tried to intercede when she saw Vizcaro's boyfriend beating her with a metal object. When he turned on her, Rock pulled out her 45 caliber handgun and fired. He staggered away and was later found dead in a nearby parking lot. And that was in Tampa Bay, Florida. <clears throat> Heather Thompson, 22, had a restraining order against her former boyfriend when he entered her home with a knife and began stabbing her. Michael White, 24, Thompson's current boyfriend, witnessed the attack and fired his rifle twice. The ex-boyfriend was taken to the hospital but later died of his injuries. Thompson, who was pregnant, was taken to the hospital as well and treated for multiple stab wounds. She is expected to recover. There were two children in the home at the time of the attack, but no in the other injuries were reported. And that was in uh, Danby, Vermont. That, that's a, a crying shame there. After a few days' work at First National Bank, a woman found herself at a gunpoint in her home. Her husband was being held up by two intruders as well. The assailants abducted the couple and forced them to drive back to the bank and take an undisclosed amount of money when ordered them to continue driving. It was then that the husband grabbed the gun, kept in the vehicle, and fired at the suspects before calling 911. Police arrived to find both suspects lying on the ground near the vehicle, suffering from gunshot wounds. They were taken to the hospital, and one suspect was pronounced dead. And that was in Houston, Texas. Police were dispatched to Pizza Haven 2 late one evening to respond to a robbery. The owner of the pizzeria reported that he had just been robbed by two men, one of whom was armed with a rifle. The robbers demanded money from, from the cash register, which the owner handed over. The suspects then ordered the owner into an office where he demanded more money. Instead, the owner pulled his own firearm. One of the robbers was so alarmed that he fell backward and dropped his rifle. The owner then chased the two robbers from his business. Both men were later arrested and charged with first-degree robbery, second-degree larceny, and conspiracy for both accounts. No one was injured in the robbery of the pizzeria, and that was in New Haven, Connecticut. <clears throat> Shortly before midnight, three men entered, wow, these names, Kaczynski's Concertina Beer Hall, banishing weapons and attempting to rob the poker bar. <coughs> um, pa, pa. The owner of the business, Andy Kuczynski, pulled out his own firearm and fired at the suspects, killing one. The other two robbers fled the scene, but were later arrested. I defended myself, said Kowalski. I did the shooting, two guys with guns that are up... Uh, I did the shooting, two guys with guns. What are you going to do? Protect yourself and your customers. That's what I did. And that was in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Rodney Long, 38, an inmate who had escaped from prison, prison decided to hide out in the home of 71-year-old Jerome Modry and his wife, Carolyn, 66. He broke into the home around 10.15 p.m. and held a couple hostage as he gathered supplies to aid in his escape. But after a few hours, Jerome Modry decided to put a put up a fight and retrieve his shotgun. Mordy fired a single shot before, 911 was, uh, uh, before a 911 call was made shortly after 2 a.m. Police arrived to find Long facing down in the kitchen of Marjorie's home 
with the fatal gunshot wound, putting an end to the manhunt. <clears throat> Long was serving time for a burglary charge and was suspected of shooting a sheriff's deputy after his escape from prison. Mordry sustained no injuries, and that was in Bedford, Iowa. John Hunt was outside washing his car with two of his sons around 7 p.m. when they were approached by two armed men. One of the men put his gun to the neck of Hunt's son, Marcus, and said, You know what time it is. Marcus ran in, <clears throat> into a nearby yard and the suspect followed him, taking a necklace and a large amount of cash. <clears throat> he then fired a shot at Marcus. Meanwhile, Hunt had gone inside and retrieved his 9mm handgun. Hunt quickly returned to the scene and fired at both suspects, striking one in the chest and the other in the thigh. After being treated, both men were arrested and are now facing charges of first-degree robbery. And that was in Buffalo, New York. Well, there you have it, friends. Uh, just a few stories, a few witnesses of how uh, having a firearm, using and knowing how to use it, can save your life, the life of your loved ones, and even the life of your employees. So, uh, <clears throat> always be ready, always be prepared, and support the Second Amendment. This is uh, Firearm Pop. You be safe out there, and God bless. Bye now.